we're still in the middle uh, of this pandemic and it evokes so many uh, feelings uh, so many feelings and so many emotions and uh, and then on top of all of that other things come up uh, to tap into your uh, feelings you still have to deal with issues at work you still have to deal with uh, issues in your family and then as a nation uh, we deal with things that touch our emotions um, of course I'm referring to uh, the young man that was killed in Minneapolis and it evoked so many feelings and so many emotions uh, it makes, makes you angry so what do you do with these uh, emotions uh, and tonight I want to challenge you uh, that we go in the word of God and do what the Bible tells us to do, uh, not to continue to suppress feelings and suppress emotions, but uh, to do what God has, what God says to us in the Word of God in Ephesians. Uh, the Word of the Lord tells us to be angry and sin not. And tonight, I just want to focus on the first part of that uh, scripture, where God is telling us to be angry. Be angry. God doesn't say don't be angry. He says, listen, we are human beings. We have feelings. We have emotions. And what he's telling us to he's telling us that uh, anger is not a sin per se. What did he do with all these suppressed emotions? He says, be angry. Come on, somebody just say, it's all right. It's okay to be angry. Right now with all of this going on, it's all right to be angry. Listen, tell somebody who you know of, who is that angry, it's all right to be angry. It's all right to be angry. But I have to, I have to uh, show you in the word of God how to actually express this anger and uh, in the word of God. Come on, we, we can read that scripture. Uh, in the word of God, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says, be angry and do not sin. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the wrath, the sun go down on your wrath. And what, and what you have to understand is that uh, there are different forms of, of, of anger. Uh, for our purposes on tonight, we want to talk about two different forms of anger. Uh, destructive anger. Anger is simply uh, an outward expression of an inward suppression. You wonder why people explode? It, anger is an emotional, is an outward expression of an inward suppression and and is what we do with it is is how is what we do with it that that de determines what type of anger it is and what we have to do with the anger what we have to do is when we realize that we have destructive anger uh, we have to understand that destructive anger is dangerous and it destroys uh, so what we have to do is take the anger that we have and realize that God uses our anger. Don't get rid of your anger. Is anybody angry tonight? <laughs> Somebody shout, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry, I'm angry. Is anybody angry tonight? See, I want you to understand that your anger has a purpose. And, you, and see, as long as you use your anger in the right way, as long as you take that anger and point it in a proper uh, constructive direction, you take your anger, uh, and if you see your anger is pointing uh, in a destructive uh, area, what we do is we take that anger and we, we point it in a different area to something that's constructive. Uh, and, and here, I can, I can explain it to you like this. Um, I used to go to Lee's football games when he played football. Not only his football games, but I would go to his practices. And I went to one practice, and uh, one of the guys on the defense, Lee was running offense, and one of the guys on defense 
they had the cleats on. They they uh, they ran. They stepped on Lee's hand with those cleats on. With those cleats, and I noticed immediately that Lee was what angry. Now he could have took that anger. You know, um, he could have taken that anger and he could have started a fight. He could have, cause see, and that would have been destructive anger. Destructive anger is an aggressive, impulsive, and explosive emotional expression. It's, 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 it's aggressive and impulsive uh, and, 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 and explosive. And what he could have done is taken that anger and exploded and started a fight. But what I watched him do at that same practice, he took that anger and he redirected that anger and he pointed it toward his purpose. His purpose for being at practice was to, to experience victory. And so what he did, he took all that anger and he put it on the field. And he took that anger, and then he, he just launched out on the field. And that's what we have to do. We have to take that anger, take the anger, and, and point it in a, in a direction that's constructive. So uh, destructive anger is anger that is impulsive uh, and uh, explosive. And watch this. It's often marked by shouting, verbal and physical abuse, or self-destructive acts. Destructive anger is aggressive, impulsive, and explosive. It's often marked by shouting, verbal, or physical abuse, or self-destructive acts. And most times, destructive anger, uh, it points at other people. Destructive anger points at other people. Now, constructive anger is the, is the other type that we want to talk about tonight. Constructive anger is an emotional expression which is solution-oriented. You're looking for a result, and it's often marked by self-examination, curiosity, respect for others and yourself. Uh, that's constructive, uh, and, and watch this, and it always points at sin. It never points at people. Constructive anger points at sin. And that's what you, so what in the Bible, what you can call these two different types of anger, one is sinful anger, which would be destructive anger, and the other is a righteous anger. And that's what we see in the scripture in Matthew, the 21st chapter, uh, the Bible says in the 12th verse, it says, then Jesus went into the temple of God and drove out all those who brought and sold in the temple and overturned tables of money changers and and the seats of those who sold doves and jesus said to them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and what i'm trying to show you that right here jesus was what if he if i walked up in here right now y'all know i like to do illustrations start turning over tables and turn over chairs y'all would know that i was angry and this is exactly what jesus did jesus was angry but what I want you to understand is that this was a righteous anger. This anger uh, is served a purpose. And watch this. It wasn't pointing at people. This anger was pointing at sin. And, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you that anger is important. Anger is like fuel. Uh, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that, is that what you hate is what you've been called to change. Whatever you hate is what you've been called to change. And see, Jesus, he had two emotions that, 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 that took him to the cross, that led him to the cross. One emotion that led him to the cross is his love for us, his love for people. And the other emotion that took him to the cross uh, was his hatred of sin. And what I'm trying to tell you is that, is that the thing is that what you hate is what you've been called to change. And what, and what anger does, anger is the fuel for that change. Right now in our nation, right now in our nation, our nation is angry. Not just African Americans, not just black people are angry, but of course black people are angry. Uh, but not just black people because the anger is not, is not directed toward people, but is directed toward the injustice, toward the sin. And so, and so our nation is, is, is angry. And what I'm trying to tell you to do is that instead of taking the anger, this anger and, 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 and miss focusing uh, and miss our focus and get distracted, we have to keep our focus on the right fight. Remember that from Sunday? 
uh, what the enemy tries to do, he tries us to get us off focus and get us distracted and get us to fight the wrong fight and start fighting people instead of fighting uh, the system that needs to change. Does that make any sense, Juice? Any sense, Juicy? And see, what, what, what this anger can do, this anger is fuel for the change that has to happen in our nation. Change has to happen. And what that anger does, that anger, the anger is not directed or it should not be directed toward people, toward the person that committed the act because it's different people all the time. We just saw it happen in Atlanta. And then we just saw and, and then we just saw and we just saw it happen on yesterday in Minnesota. So being angry at a person solves nothing. That's destructive and it won't resolve anything. But constructive anger is, is directed and it takes your anger and is pointed toward the sin. And see, and that anger, it, it fuels you to hate this injustice so much that it brings about change. And that's the, exactly what we want to do with the anger. So what I'm, what I'm encouraging you to do, I'm not going to, because I'm teaching, because I'm a, a pastor, I'm not going to tell you tonight, listen, everybody, calm down and don't be angry. What I'm saying tonight is be angry. Somebody shout, be angry. Be angry, and I want you to be angry enough that it's going gonna, it's gonna to drive change. Be angry like Jesus going into the temple and turning over tables and chairs. He didn't just accept it. Oh, love everybody, love your enemies. No, he went in there kicking it because he didn't want it to stay the same. The Bible never says to don't be angry. Somebody shall be angry. Be angry. Be angry, be angry. Uh, I've never talked. Never preach a sermon. Be angry, but 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 listen. But listen. According to the Word of God, our anger serves a purpose. It serves a purpose. But it's up to us. It's up to us to to fulfill that purpose, and and point our anger in the right direction, so that the enemy doesn't win. Listen. Listen. I want to. I want to. I want to uh, show you this. It says, listen. Don't focus on the wrong fight. Don't focus on the wrong fight. We were talking about uh, Jehoshaphat and how he was attacked by three different opponents. How he, how he got a, a su surprise, he was under a surprise attack. And when he didn't know what to do, when he didn't know what to do, he knew, he knew who to go to. The Bible said he began to pray. He began to fast. The Bible says that he fell down. He fell down and worshiped. And what are you saying? I'm saying that when things are going on and when you don't know what to do, when you feel like there's a battle that's too big for you, oftentimes it's not for you. This battle belongs to the Lord. But see, you can win a battle that's too big for you, but you have to trust God with it. When you know when there's a battle that's too big for you, the battle belongs to God. But watch this. See, see what, what, what we tend to do, we try to use willpower. I can win. I know I can beat him. I know, I know I can beat him. And we use willpower. But you see what he did? It's not about willpower. It's about worship. He fell in worship. And if you think about it, every big battle, I'm not just talking about uh, uh, physical battles. I'm talking about battles that we have within ourselves. What we do is not about willpower. It's about worship. Think about it. Somebody who's, who, who chooses to use uh, alcohol to win a battle that they can't deal with, what, what they're doing is that they're trusting alcohol to meet a need. And see, what they're doing is that they're giving more worship to the alcohol than they're giving to God. See, and, and see, that's what we have to, see, it's not about willpower, it's about what we choose to worship. And, and what he did is that he fell down in worship, and we have to trust that God is able to meet whatever need that we're facing. The, see, we're, when we worship alcohol, we're, we're believing that the alcohol can meet a need that we don't think that God can meet in whatever area in our life. You know why uh, people look at pornography? Uh, it, it's not just about a sexual thing. It's an addiction. It's, it's about worship. They're using pornography to meet a need that they don't believe that God can meet. It's about worship. So what I'm telling you is that we've got to fall down and worship God. We need you. Oh, Lord, we need you. When you're angry, God says, be angry, but sin not. That anger, that anger has to come not from our old sinful nature. 
If you go in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says, put away the old nature, and it says, put on the new nature. So the anger, that anger can't come from your old self. That, that anger has to come from your, the new self. It has to come from a righteous place. It has to come from righteous, from a holy place. Righteous anger. Because, and then that's when it's constructive. And that when, that's when it will drive about change. I want to encourage uh, everyone who's, 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 who's um, going through just not anxiety. Listen, we've gone from anxiety to anger. Just like that, in the last 24, 48 hours, we've gone from anxiety to anger. And what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to, I'm not saying don't be angry. I'm saying, I'm saying be angry. But what I want you to understand is that we have to know how to direct that anger, how to channel that anger, and then how to focus. Don't focus on the wrong fight. We have to still worship God and just trust that God, listen, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying, just, I'm saying we can pray. Prayer is our first priority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things will be added to, unto you. So prayer is pivotal. Prayer is primary. And after we've done praying, now it's time to come up with a plan for change. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? After we, after we, we, uh, we pray and we've heard from God, trust God to give us a plan for change. And listen, this battle is too big for us to fight on our own, so this battle is the Lord's. But watch this. Even though Jehoshaphat didn't fight this battle, God still told him to show up. Listen, even though you don't have to fight, you still have to show up for the fight. Y'all understand what I'm saying? You have to show up for the fight and trust God. Trust that God is going to save us from, listen, this battle may be too big for us, but it's not too big for my God. Amen. This, listen, what's happening um, all over this nation with all this violence, this battle may be too big for us, but it's not too big for God. Listen, I, um, for the longest time, I, I know I get a lot of slack as a pastor because I don't really address uh, a lot of controversial issues uh, like the one that just happened. Um, but I've learned sometimes when I, uh, um, when I don't have enough information and if I'm over emotional about something, sometimes it's best to just be quiet about it. No matter what people, what, what people are saying, listen, when you, know, when you know the truth, you don't have to prove who you are by what you do. When you know the truth, I know who I am and I know whose I am. When you know the truth, you don't have to prove who you are by what you do. But listen, and I'm telling you, I don't know why God used me in this way, but watch this. What I'm telling you is that I'm 54 years old. I'm about to be 55 years old. And I, and I have maybe once that I can remember have experienced one racial injustice. And then that wasn't anything major. Um, I was in a small town and um, I was at a gas station, uh, and an elderly uh, Caucasian woman, um, and, and I don't even think she meant it racially. It's just her, 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 her uh, maybe her history. But what she did, um, she said, hey, boy, can you get that for me? And something rose up in me. Shiloh, I'm telling you, when, 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 when that white woman spoke to me, a black man, and said, hey, boy, that's the only experience that I could, and it something just rose up. I was angry. I was, I'm telling you, I was, I was angry. But what am I going to do, attack a little old lady? Of course not. No, um, I didn't. I, um, I, I didn't do anything just super heroic or anything, but I just brought that up to, to, to tell you that I haven't had a lot of uh, God has God has shielded me from a lot of racial injustices. Um, my son and and a lot of my friends have been through a lot of hurt. A lot of the things that we've seen um, where um, been mistreated because because of our race. Y'all understand what I'm saying? What I'm telling you, I've never had somebody just I, I can't say what I want to say. Hey, you blankety blank, or pull a gun to my head. I've got friends who had police pull gun. I think my, even my sons had a gun drawn on them. But I've never experienced any of those things, and I think God has protected me for, uh, from that. But just because I hadn't experienced them doesn't mean that I know, I don't realize that these things actually happen every day. 
But I think one of the reasons I think that God shielded me from so much of that is so I wouldn't get off focus and get distracted and don't focus on the wrong fight. We are to point people to Jesus. We aren't, and, 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 that's our, and that's what we do with our anger. I'm trying to tell you, with our anger, our anger, people of God, let's take our anger and point it in the right direction. Don't point it towards people, point it towards sin. Be angry at sin. Be angry at the sin that's causing all of this violence. Be angry at the sin that causes uh, racism. Be angry at the sin. And sin not. I'm believing God that as the people of God, and we do it where we're called to do, uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, let's, let's calm down. We don't have to keep post, posting stuff out of anger. Let's humble ourselves and pray. I'm telling you, we have to trust God that there will be change. There has been, he's done it before, he'll do it again. But what we have to do is totally and completely depend on God. Totally and completely depend on God. And God will save us. God will save us from, he will deliver us from this evil. Everybody that's angry tonight, I want to encourage you to do what? Be angry. Be angry, but allow it to be constructive anger. Allow it to lead to a solution, lead to a resolution that will provoke change, come up with creative ideas, do different things that will, uh, that will heal our nation and bring our nation together. Are y'all receiving this word tonight? Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Hand of praise that he's healing our land. Do you believe that God is healing our land? I believe it. The enemy will have us fighting each other. The people are even trying to help us. Listen, don't fight against who you, who you should be fighting for. Don't fight against who you should be fighting for. Don't fight against who you should be fighting for. I want to encourage everybody tonight to, uh, to continue to trust God. Take your anger, channel it. Don't point it at other people. Love people and hate the sin. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.